Okay, welcome everybody to our, our class today. And we're focusing uh, in the syllabus. Let me share my syllabus here. We can see what's going on. Okay, so we're, we're getting really close. You guys are gonna be happy. We are just about done with phonetics, almost. September 9th, phonetic transcription practice. You'll notice in, in the module, uh, we're gonna focus on diphthongs. And then we'll do a little bit more phonetic transcription on the 14th and probably get into phonology a little bit. I'll probably talk about that a little bit on uh, Tuesday also. Notice how we have review for quiz one here and then quiz one, September 21st. And, and that just means that I'm gonna open it for the entire week, whatever that week is there, I'll have it open for the entire week and you can take that quiz at will. Uh, if, you, if you cannot use Lockdown Browser, uh, you can take the quiz during the class. I guess you can do it that way. Okay, let me see what else we need to do here. Okay, let's go to the, the workbook or let's go over to one more thing here on Canvas. Okay, so when you look at the modules, you can also see, so it says diphthongs, the theta and the ed consonants. So we got three kind of three different complicated sounds we're focusing on today. That's kind of where we are. And then let's get into the workbook and just focus in those areas. Okay, where is it here? All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Boy, we got some big, big tough ones right here. I'm going to break them apart a little bit. Okay, hold on. Okay, wait a minute. Now I want to make sure I can edit again. How do I edit somebody? What do I do here? Oh, it's right up here. I just can't see it. Enable editing. Yeah, I, my yeah. Zoom thing is blocking it. Crap. There, got it. Okay, there it is. Yeah, I, I couldn't even, I couldn't get to it because of the the Zoom little options on top there. Okay, let's get. We'll go right to the end. That'll get us right to it. Hey, Professor. Yes, sir. Uh, I did what you recommended, and I just printed out your book, and it just came out to $35 at Staples. So the whole thing is, uh, for any other student interested, just 35 bucks gets this whole thing. So okay, kind of a way to participate without struggling, you know? Yeah, yeah. That, that works better for you doing it that like that? Yes, sir. All right. Anybody wants to print it out? Print it out. Yeah, I always wondered what's the difference between print it and print it out. Print the workbook or print out the workbook. Eat at a restaurant, eat out at a restaurant. We call these phrasal verbs, right? We put these little preposition or these particle words after the, the verb. Okay, let's try these out. So if you look at these three sounds, maybe if I show you this just briefly, right? So if you look at the, right, you have this particular sound here, you have to kind of think of it as breaking into the, the, the ah, uh, and then the e, ah, uh, e, i, but you can't separate it. That's what a complex vowel is. So you have to take both of those sounds together and just say, I, 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 I. 
So there's kind of two movements going on in the mouth when we produce a sound. So this is why we call these dip thongs. Dip is two, right? Die two. And you have, okay, let's look at one more here. We have the Let's try this one. So if we have the ow, ow. So we break it into the ow and then the ow, ooh, ow. So we start out with more of an open ow, ow. But then once we go to the ooh, we have to round the lips. So again, we kind of glide the two sounds together to get that one. And then when you look at the last one, we have the, so what two sounds are coming together in this complex vowel? Somebody? Oi, o, oi, oi. Do you guys hear both of those sounds? O, O, E, Oi, Oi. So we're basically, the, these are the three sounds we're practicing right, right now. Okay, let's go back to the workbook. Okay, let's focus on, so you have I as in Mike, you have Al as in brown, brown. We have the oi as in boy, boy. So let's see how we can do on, on these uh, eight. And maybe I should make it a little bit bigger. Hold on a minute, hold on, give me a second. There we go, right there. Okay, there we go, Paulina, go for it. So you have bound. Notice number two, oi, oi, oh, oh, oil, oil, Paulina. Wait a minute, Paulina, come back. Oi, oh, oh, what is that oh? Oil. Um, the syllabic L. Exactly, yeah. How do you, how do you transcribe that? You put the little like comma looking thing under the L. Yes. And that would, and it is two syllables, right? Oil, oil. So we have town, town, toy, my. We have pow, pouch, 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 bound bound good it's looking good there we have br bright i bright house what is it in canadian house 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 how do they say it Ow, house they definitely have a different or ow, ow, qua, how, house, house, bright, bright, town, toy, toy, pouch, my, oil, oi, oh, oil. Yeah, good, house. Okay, number 19. What if you make the poor OS on it and say, House is. How do you transcribe that? House is. What do you do at the very end with the poor OS ending that creates a new syllable? House is. Um, would it be the S high check or how you, is that how you say it? Not the S. I just said house is. House is. Oh, it'd be a Z. Yeah, it's an a, I. Yeah, the big I and the Z, right? If you want to make it plural. Okay, so everything looks good here. Any questions on these eight? So far, so good.
Okay, now here's a quick question. I'm gonna ask somebody here, see if we can, I'm just gonna throw something out here with the with what we have. So if if I did do this, so I put houses, why did I have, why did I create that new syllable at the end? And how might that be related to either phonology or morphology? Morphology kind of looks at the grammatical uh, endings and things, affixes, and affixes can be either suffixes or prefixes in English. Why do you think, why don't, why not just put the S at the end? Why do we have to say houses? For example, if you transcribe it like that, why not just keep the S there and not put another syllable in there? Why do we have to add that is? If we don't have the is, it would make it just one syllable word when it's a two syllable word, which would change the word itself, wouldn't it? Well, would you be able to know that it's plural if you didn't make that second syllable? If you say house versus houses, it definitely changes from singular to plural, right? If you try to pronounce the S twice, it's just awkward. House. How does that work? Doesn't work very well, right? So sometimes if we have a word like you know, books, it's easy to just put an S. There's no problem because we can clearly hear the S and the S comes after the voiceless K. So you have book and you have books, books. So we can very clearly hear that singular versus the plural form of the word. But with some words, what you have a certain sound at the end of the word, you have to create a new syllable in order to understand that grammatical word ending at the end, or we won't know that it's a plural, it's, it's a plural noun. So house, houses, or even a singular form of, let's say we reach, he reaches, he reaches, blah, blah, blah. So sometimes we have to create that, that additional syllable so that we can hear it. The listener can hear it and hear that, that plural S or that third person S or whatever it is we're trying to do there. So I, I think assimilation and also morphology kind of comes into play here. A, we want to make sure that we hear the plural S ending. And the only way to do that is to create a new syllable. B, by creating that new syllable, this kind of connects to morphology. We can recognize that that affix is a plural S grammatical ending. We know what it is. Okay, let's keep going here. So we're good here. Let's move on. Okay, let's try these out. Okay, let me space them out a little bit. I don't want to do everything at once here. Let's. So we have some uh, compound nouns here, it looks like, or in some cases. Okay, let's try these out, see what we can do here. There we go. How, ow, how. How now, brown cow. What was the tongue twister? Anybody know this tongue twister in Spanish? I still can't do it right. Tres, tres de tigres, trajeren en un traguel. You guys ever heard that one? I've heard it before, but I don't know how to say it. Yeah, it's, it's really tough. It's a, there's another one when I was learning Spanish. I, I don't know if you ever heard this song in English. John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith, that ridiculous song. Well, somebody taught it to me in Spanish. He's like, Juan Paco Pedro de la Mar es mi nombre, si, cuando ya me voy. Me dicen que yo soy Juan Paco Pedro de la Mar, la, 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 la. And then you just repeat the chorus all over again. 
I remember when I was first learning Spanish back in the 80s, there was this guy, he was absolutely incredible, this professor. He he was convinced, he was utterly convinced that you did you never needed to use when you're teaching a new language in a classroom, his argument was you never needed to use English to do it. And what he would do is every time we came to class, this guy spoke like eight or nine different languages. He would teach one of the classes entirely in a different language that we didn't know. And it was crazy. We could understand what he was doing. Yet we, we couldn't understand what he, what he was saying but by how he was speaking and his gestures and he got us repeating things and saying things. And his point was, is if you're teaching a foreign language in a classroom in the United States, teach it in the language the whole time. If that means you do songs and poems and games and all of that stuff, it can all be done in that language. That was his argument. And he actually had a pretty good argument. The way he was doing it and one time he taught us in a in a language and he he's he and nobody could figure out what it was because we none of us ha had any good language background he's actually teaching in tacalog from the philippines anybody speak tacalog como esta acá mi bote you know maha kita you know he he was speaking in that language and that is a that is a crazy language. It's got some Spanish influences in there. It's got influences from a lot of Asian languages. It is really a hodgepodge of all kinds of different languages all combined into one. It is a tough one to figure out. It has so many influences from so many different languages. Okay, we'll see how we're doing here. We're almost done. So we've got how. We have phi. Phi. No. Oh, oh. I would change number six. Look at number six. The AL, change that to a syllabic L. Oh, final. Oh. Yeah, and then get rid of the A there. You don't even need that. Before the, the yeah, there you, that's it right there. Perfect. Now you got it. Final. Oh, final. How. Bright. Bright ice. Ice. Bright ice. Loud noise noise it's a z exactly now here's a question in phonology why is the s a z sound in the word noise can anybody tell me that remember think about the environment in which the s occurs what does it come after A vowel? Yeah, you see it right there. Now, it's fair to say, right? Vowels are always voiced. I don't think there's such thing as a voiceless vowel, at least in English. You never know about other languages, right? So, so because the vowel is voiced, the S also becomes voiced. So noise, noise. Now, it doesn't happen all the time, though. How about a word like peace? You have E, right? But then the C sounds like an S, so it doesn't follow in that case, but in this case, it does. So the main thing, uh, wh whoever did number 22, let me say, you have Ray, Ray, or Re, Ray, mind. Okay, we need the syllabic R at the end, Dur, er. And I would change that 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 little e to me it's more re reminder reminder not ray reminder am i saying it wrong right reminder right there you go so what is the e re yeah re there you go perfect no no wait a minute not Reminder, reminder. The yeah. little I. Yes, yes. And then er, er, reminder, er. What is the er? How do we show that sound at the end? The syllabic R. Exactly. Somebody do it 
and do the same thing for 23. It's sour, sour, sour. Yes, thank you, Jose. There you go. And you have shine, shine, shine. No, 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 no. Shine. The difference between the N and the syllabic N is, does it create a new syllable at the end of the word? In this case, it does not. There. That's what I'm talking about, right? Okay, now. Okay, watch this. So um, in, my, in my class this morning, I was teaching the little I and the big I, right? And I already know in Korean, those are basically the same sound, right? So I had two Korean students in the class, and I said, okay, say this and these, right? Now, I was cheating. Don't report me. But there's only four people in the whole class. We're all spaced out. But I, they need to see what I'm doing. I took my mask down, and I go, mit, meat, mit meat this when i said this i was having them pay attention to the tongue being inserted in between the teeth that's an interdental consonant so i was having them try to say this and these and the two koreans would just say these and these they wouldn't say this and then finally i said look at which one's more open so the e e e e e once they saw how my mouth was a little bit different and I had the one student, I'd say, pull your mask down for just a second. I want you to say both of those sounds. So once she went like E eh, and then E, E, and she kind of put the lips out more, E, and also told them that the tongue is actually hard, E, 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 that tongue is actually hard when I do it. And then E, eh, it's softer. And once I explained it to them and I kind of showed them and then I had the two practice, they were maybe 60% uh accurate by the end of the class once i was able to explain it but that doesn't mean anything now the homework assignment was is i had a paragraph right and i said the paragraph has these two sounds in it in the different sentences your homework assignment is to read the paragraph out loud record it on your phone and then email it to me that's exactly what they did so now I got 12 emails from all these students practicing these two sounds by reading a paragraph and I also told him, I said, when you, I said, when you read the paragraph, I told him, I said, it took me uh, 27 seconds to read it. And I was actually pausing. I wasn't just reading nonstop because that's not how we do it. I was showing them how to pause. I was showing them the tone, pronunciation, all those things. So then I gave, I told them it took me 27 seconds. I told them they can take up to 45 seconds, but no longer than that. Because it's, if it takes you more than 45 seconds, you're just, you're too slow. I'm trying to get them used to the speaking speed that's natural to California and the United States. But what about New Jersey, Michael? Okay, forget that. That's like 2,000 words a minute. You know, we're not doing that here right now. I just want to, well, how about go down to Mississippi? Okay, let's slow it down to 80 words a minute down there. How y'all doing today? You know, okay, that's a totally different thing there, right? Actually, if you're if you're a non-native speaker, going down to the south is probably not a bad idea because everything's really slow down there. Everybody talks slowly. It's easy to understand what's going on and all that. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, we're good. Professor, we're, yes, go right ahead. Um, can can you kind of relate that to how some Spanish speakers um with the R sound instead of saying like for example, if we say like rosa, like we we curl like our tongue. But then other people say like Rosa, like can you kind of compare it to like how how yeah, you like right. yeah your mouth moves and things like that or like your tongue right yes and and I think with not all not all dialects of Spanish trildia trildia are by the way I think that's that's a a particular dialect in Mexico am I right no, I'm not too sure that, that's why I'm asking I'm like a, I mean it's something you can compare it to so. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's with the, the R and the R, right? That That's a tough sound for English speakers because the R does not exist in English. But what about mm -hmm. Scottish English, Michael? Richard. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Scottish English is way out there, right? I, if you, if uh, that's a whole different ball game, but yeah, that you could compare their sounds in Spanish that don't exist in English and vice versa. And mm -hmm. that would be important 
when you if you do if you're a materials writer for ESL, right? You publish textbooks and things, and you you can target a book to a certain audience. You could have a pronunciation book designed for Arab students or a pronunciation book designed for Spanish speaking students learning English and on and on and on. And you could you could show those differences and those similarities in there so they have something to work with. Yeah, because I kind of thought as well, like, um, for example, like my last name, I know, like, usually when I'm um, typing something or filling out like an application, something online, um, yeah. the enye. Like that's something that I can just I I can't necessarily put like on on like certain applications or they say it's like my name is wrong. So yeah. if I just put a normal and it's like Nunes, but with the N, it's Nunez. Yeah, so, I I always assume because I know Spanish when I see the yeah. N like that, I assume it's a it's a N. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I know what you're saying. And and there is there's characters that will do that, but you have to kind of program it into the keyboard. Mm -hmm. uh, but that would be a, an example there okay yeah. what, do we, what do we have here what let's go to okay let's see how we can do with these this is good enough here right okay let's try 9 through 15 here 24 through 30 so let's see how we can do with this okay professor yes sir i'm having an issue with power because if phonetically I'm saying it like power, like there's, uh, you have the A W and then you, it sounds like w -E -R. like, well, you have pow. When you look at the diphthong, it's ending with the W. So there's really no need to create a, a, another W in there. It's pow, power. It, it that 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 W glides into the syllabic R. You hear it, power. You see that? I do. Thank you. Yeah, it's just just like that. Power, power. And remember that everything that I'm saying, when we look at words in isolation, that's one thing. But remember, once we get into speaking a hundred to two hundred words a minute, which is exactly what you guys are doing when you lead this class. Uh, things get a little bit different, right? The sounds at the end are not as clearly pronounced and things are blended together more than, than if we see them in isolation. And uh, 26, yeah, thank you. No, no syllabic R there, yeah. Green eyes, eyes, perfect, good. Self-correction is the best form of correction. That's what I tell my, my ESL students. So one of the things when, when I do a voice recording and I help them, uh, I will actually, I will send them an audio recording. So I listen to their recording. So they're going to hear me listen to the recording and I'm going to comment on the recording as they listen to it. And I send them back an email like that. So, and that really helps them. And so if they send me, and because it's really complicated what I'm trying to do here, I have a, a rule I keep their, their voice recordings they send me are limited to 60 seconds. And that way, if I have 11 people in the class sending me stuff, I can get through each one in five minutes or less. So that's about to comment on one minute audio segments with 11 people, that's going to take at least an hour. So you can imagine if they send me five minute audio segments and I start commenting on that. Now, that's probably going to take 10 to 15 minutes per student. So I keep things. I try to keep my workload not too high, but I still want to give them valuable feedback so they can monitor their overall speaking and pronunciation fluency as they go through my, my presentation skills course. It's all about the feedback. Remember that one. When you do with ESL, it's all, it's all about the feedback. They got to get the feedback or they don't know what's going on. And with writing, I teach writing sometimes. Wow, what a nightmare. Whoa. So instead of correcting everything, in correction, there is some research to support that it's helpful, but I'll pick a paragraph that they wrote out of three pages, and I'll completely correct everything within that paragraph. And believe it or not, I'll even do like an error correction video. And I'll look at that particular paragraph. I'll make all the corrections. I'll explain why. And then that, that's about a, a three to five minute video. And I'll send it 
back to them either by YouTube or if it's a small enough video file, I'll send it back by email. But that's a whole nother. Writing is very sticky. Wow, man, it's tough. Slyly. Mouth. Mouth. Professor, I have a quick question. Yeah, um, well, well, hold on one sec there. Number 10, look at, somebody has, it looks like Midas. It's Mide, Midas. Okay, go ahead. So my oh. last name is pronounced oh. same and it's spelled S-E-Y-M. Why, uh, but people oh. say sign. I'm not sure why they say sign. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, let, let me here write it on the write it on the uh, on the page here. How do you spell your name one more time? Okay. Yeah, they're going people are going to pronounce it phonologically with the phonological patterns they already know. So that's how it's spelled. Same, same. How do you pronounce it? Same, like the word same. Oh, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Same, same. And how do you say people pronounce it? Same with same, an I. Same, I, same. There's a reason why they're doing that. And I, I don't know exactly why. I can't think of the reason why. Syme. I'm, I'm thinking of words like I'm, I'm trying to look at some words that, that actually have that. Sometimes I get sim. It's like gray. Like the so G what I noticed EY. Time. is the EY reminds me of like I like eyeball. And I feel like that could be a big contributor to it. Yeah, I I see where you're saying. Yeah, they always say sim, sim, sims. It's German. Yeah. Yeah, there's it's phonologically they're just taking what they're used to. I would probably say same looking at it. Say mm -hmm. say a say same. But I don't know that we have an EY spelling in English like this, do we? I don't think I don't, so. Uh, yeah, I don't know of Unless that. someone mentioned gray. Oh, yeah. So then it. A gray. Same. A gray. A. Same, but that's still the same sound. Or they also say seem because of um, Seymour, which has same in it. Yeah. So they say seem as well. All right. Okay, let's take a look at what we have here. Let's see how we're doing with these words here. So we have mouth. We have my, my, what is that? The little you? My deuce, I'm thinking my, my dis, right? My dis. Somebody tried 11? Crap, you got guts. Wow, man. I Ang tried it. I don't know if it's good. Yeah, yeah. Anxiety. Ang Anxiety. Anxiety, crap, who knows? Anxiety, I think you're pretty close. So I don't have any problems with a T at the end. Anxiety, if you use, I, I use a flap, I say anxiety. I'm saying, I'm not using a G. Notice how the G, when the N occurs before the G, it becomes velar, velar, velarized because of a, uh, assimilation and it becomes similar to the G and the K. So it's ang, anxiety, uh, the schwa, anxiety. This is the stress, right? Anxiety. Ang. 
But here, I could see the, anybody have the capital E? I think I could see that. I could see, in unstressed syllables, there's a lot of variation with vowels, by the way. So you're, you're close to it. Uh, let's see, Taylor's got sly, 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 li, no, sly, li, e, e, sly, li. So what is that? E. Yeah, just the little I, right? Slyly. Power, power. Night hound, coin. Notice here with 15, it isn't a syllabic in. It's not coin on, as in button or lesson. It's just coin. So it's one syllable. So that is correct. 15's good. These are all good. We got shine. No, we got shin. Shin. No, 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 that's not it. No, that's shin, not shine. What do we do with 24? A-Y. Yes, thank you. You're yeah, throw that in there. We got boy, boy, green eyes, ground, lie. Okay, how do we indicate lion? Lion. How do we indicate that sound at the end? I don't think you have to have not lion on. Uh, oh, lion. Uh, uh. It's lion. Un, lion. Lion. What is that sound at the end there? And then what, Ashley? What do we got? Yeah, syllabic in. That's the one I'm looking for. Lion, lion, joust, joust, knighthood. Perfect. We got it. Okay, good. Thank you. Any questions on those? I have a question. So for yes. lion, I see lion, like with the O in. So if on the quiz I put it like that, that's the thing where you said we can like reach out to you and if we say it different. I'll, I'll look at it, and typically, if I think it's a possible thing, I'm not going to mess with it. Because remember, I'm teaching three sections at 3110, and I don't want 15 million emails. So if there's if there's any any way you can get credit for it, I'll give it to you. But if, okay, if, if you. still I take some points off and you, you, you think you should get a point or something, that's when you come by my office. Then we bring the test up together or the quiz and we take a look at it and then we, we can discuss it that way. You, it, that's possible. I will avoid that at all costs, though, because then I get super, super busy. But if, if you have to come in, come in. I will talk about it. I had six people come to my office today alone. Yeah. Okay, this is good. We're making progress. These, it will not get any harder. This one, I consider the, the difficulty level on this is through the roof. Really tough. You, you won't see anything that hard. But some of these are longer. I wanted to give you some practice with some longer words. Okay, any questions on these before I move over into the theta and the ed? Uh, yes, actually, yeah, I have a right question. Ahead. Yeah. Um, so we're learning diphthongs. What exactly makes these sounds different from A? Like, wouldn't that be a diphthong as well? Good question. You would ask that. S some people look at the O and the A also as diphthongs. I, I, in different books, I think in a newer edition, it reflects that. And I mean, I acknowledge that, that those longer vowel sounds arguably can also be complex vowels. So I think you have a good argument with those. But you, you wouldn't have a good argument with like, uh, eh, eh. That's just eh. Right, right. Okay. But, but the longer ones like E and O and A, you have some arguments there that you could say they also have similar properties as these diphthongs that we just talked about you would definitely have a good argument with that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, that's a great question. That is a good question, and it exactly relates to what we're talking about. Wow. Okay, anything else? The fact that you asked that question means you know your, you know your linguistic uh, uh, materials. You know what you're doing. 
Uh, any other questions before I move on to the, the last set of practice for today? Okay, here we go. Let's see. Okay, I, I put these together because they are really tough. I mean, it, we confuse them. Okay, so before we get started with this madness, let me go into, give me a quick second here. Let me go to the whiteboard here. What's the difference? Can somebody tell me that? Let me, so if I said, what's the difference, first of all? In Ed's, there's more of a vibration. Thigh. And then with the thigh, how would you characterize that? The tongue isn't really that high. Good. So you can look at this one as being voiced, right? Yes. And then this one as being voiceless. Remember that this relates to the first characteristic of consonant sounds. What is the state of the glottis in the vocal tract in the throat area? What's happening with the vocal folds? So is the sound voiced or is it voiceless? So if you say thy, the thigh and you say thigh there's there's a difference there right so you have a voiced interdental consonant you have a voiceless interdental consonant so we refer to them as both being interdental consonants because when we when we say both sounds watch if you see in the video here watch this i say thigh thigh so whether I say thy or thy, the tongue is still being inserted in between the teeth. So the manner of articulation, right? And then where the constriction happens is exactly the same in these two sounds. The only difference is the state of the glottis. Is this sound voiced or is it voiceless? So that's the only way we can distinguish. Now, I, I wanted to work on these specifically in just isolation here so you could kind of see the difference between them. So hopefully you'll have fewer problems uh, when you do the, the quiz or the, or the test that's coming up with these. Okay, how about this? Okay, annotate away, there we go. Let's see how we can do. So we have, we have what, we have initial sounds we have final sounds let's see what's going on here so this thigh though through that thing thy so i wanted to give you practice with the initial and then of course the final teeth teeth bath bathe cloth breathe breath and let's see how we can do with these And I, I think it's fair to say, based on my 35 years of ESL teaching experience, these, these two sounds are almost impossible for a majority of speakers that I've been teaching. I've probably taught people from, I don't know, 30, 40 different languages at Cal State even, just there. And th these two sounds are really tough. So what people do, right? What do they do? They don't say these, they say these, these. So what the student does, the student takes the interdental consonant and turns it into an alveolar consonant. And then it sounds more like a Z. So they say these things instead of these things. My Chinese student this morning from, uh, uh, well, my Chinese student period. And check out this. He's my age. I'm not joking. He, well, he's two years younger than me. He came over here. I don't know his whole story yet, but I get emails from him almost every day. He is on fire. This guy studies. If I say study for 10 minutes, he studies for two hours. This guy is really motivated. I want to figure out what's going on in this guy's head. But anyway, he was saying these, right? These, 
that, those, and and I once he took his mask off, I could see what he was doing, and I showed him he needs to put the the tongue in between the teeth more. Once he saw that, he saw me doing it, then he could do it. Then he understood how to make the sound, right? But remember, okay, keep going on the other side too. There you go, Taylor. Keep it rolling. Keep the ball rolling. So, so even though I teach them today how to make these sounds, it doesn't mean that tomorrow they will be proficient in making the sounds. It just means that they're kind of learning how to do it and they need to continue getting a lot of exposure to English. And as we continue to practice, they become more and more proficient kind of as they go through the semester. So maybe right now, most of my students have about 85% major problems with their pronunciation but maybe by the end of the semester they have only 45 percent of problems with their pronunciation but michael they still have problems well they still do but they're better than they were right think about you guys if, if i sat down with any one of you guys and i said okay here's here are seven basic rules when we need to use commas so if i explain to you when we need to use commas does that mean you have no more comma problems in your writing after I explain that to you? No, you're going to continue to have problems with punctuation, right? But as you write more and more papers, as you, as you uh, work on your writing over a period of a few years, you will be, you'll have fewer and fewer problems as you go, but you're never going to be 100% free in your writing errors. Everybody has them. That's why professors have editors who read their stuff. Everybody has problems with their writing. Okay, we're almost there. No, number five, go back. Wait a minute. Cloth, not er, not all, not cool. Uh, it's just cloth. There's no syllabic L there. Look at that one. Bathe. See, I'm not going to mess with that one because that, I think the book transcribes it like that now even, so I wouldn't mess with that. I just use the E. I try to make it simpler, easier, but you could certainly transcribe a e i would probably do the little i not the big i there but a bay bay a a a you could argue it's the little e and then the little i kind of coming together that's where the student's argument is it's a diphthong am i right the student who talked about the difference earlier you see what i'm saying yes Right. So that's your argument. Well, Michael, isn't that it? You could argue that. You could say it's the little e and then the little i. It's a, a, e, a, a. Okay, we're good. What do we have? So we got this. We have no. Look at number two. I didn't say, I didn't say thy. It's thy. So we have to change the ev to what? Yeah, I think this number two, we have to put the, the theta here, right? There we go. We got it, right? So thigh. Number three, I'm saying nothing. Can somebody correct it? See if you can figure it out. I, I'm saying though, though. Remember the capital U as in the word book. Uh, book, uh. It's not the, the. It's though, though. Okay, somebody correct three. I'm going to keep going. Through, good. We have th Somebody correct number five. Breaking news on my phone. What is it? Biden announces mandate that employers more than 100 workers require them to be vaccinated. Wow, did you guys get that? Oh, that is big. Biden requires that employers who have more than 100 workers, they have to require them to be vaccinated or they have to test for the virus like weekly. The school sent out an email yesterday saying that students and staff who were not vaccinated, um, they would have to get tested, I think, once a week or twice a week. Wow. Who's got the emergency system thing going on? What's going on? I heard it. Who's that was that? me. It's, I think it's a flash flood warning. Where? For San Bernardino County. It is? 
Yeah, I think it's for San Bernardino and Riverside County. Oh, I see some clouds out there. Okay, yeah, I see thunder clouds. Wow, okay. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, thy, perfect. Uh, this is good. We got to make corrections with... Um, no, three is still not not do, do. Uh, uh, it's though. Oh, keep working on three. Somebody fix it. Somebody fix number five. Let me look at number. No, number seven. It's thing, but it's transcribed as thing, thing. So I told you this is a tough one. Look at number seven one more time. We have. Oh, this is this is a disaster. Hijo de la. Hey, tenemos muchos problemas con esos dos sonidos. Okay, here. Look at number uh, uh, number. Why does it say one through eight over here? Crap. Who knows? Work on this one here. Work on no teeth. This one's good. No, it's the wrong vowel sound. Bathe bathe no oh, these are tough wow talk about drive uh, driving off a cliff it's a good thing i'm separating like this yeah I, that's why i did this because in previous classes it's these are really tough isn't number three bath yeah it should be like this the ash like that Oh, okay. Yeah, like that. It should, the B, the Ash, and then the Theta. And then this one, it changes to bathe, a bathe. So it's A, and then this, just like that, bathe, bathe. You have cloth, cloth, ow, cloth. No, no. Oh, you could argue the open O. I could see the open O or the typewriter A, maybe. It sounds like caught, claw, cloth, cloth. So maybe the open O and then the theta. And then you have, no, we got breathe. Breathe. So could number five be the open O and the AW or no? No, the AW is ow, as in how now brown cow. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. It's okay. totally different. I don't see that one at all. We have breathe. This person transcribed it as breathe, breathe, but not, not even close. No, B, R, here, and then maybe like that, breath, breath. We have thy. This one's good. We have... This has to be the theta here. So it's the theta, but not, not it, not the, it's thing, thing, thing. So the little I, then the igma here, then we have the that. So now you know why these are hard. You have the, the theta, then you have, we have to change this to the little the small you through, we have though, though, I would just, no, you can't save any of that. We just have to say though, right? I would just do that. Though, oh, though you have, then we have the other ones there and you'll see the answers at the end of, of this section, right? Okay, so this one, what I'm gonna recommend is practice these more and then check your answers at the workbook. And then also in the module, I have different words I put in there so you can practice these two sounds more uh, in a YouTube video. It'll kind of give you the practice. You just pause the video, you do the practice, then it shows you the answers right after and you can check them. But but we do not know what we're doing with this one. What we, need, is? we definitely need to practice on those. Okay. Are you talking about from the videos that represent for... Um for faith and for father yes okay let, let me let me look at it let me make sure i'm talking about the right thing here uh I, I took about two weeks i just went crazy i just started doing all these videos and and i just set this goal and i think i did like 50 something videos just for the 3110 i wanted to make sure you had enough different kinds of practice with different things before this semester started 
this kid's going in my driveway. He's, he's, what's he going up in my driveway for? Crap. Some kid went on a scooter in my driveway just to do it. Ah, he doesn't know that I saw him. I know who he is. I'll talk to his mom. Okay, let me go in there. Give me a second. Where is it? Okay, let me share here. I think it will be. Yeah, if you look at it, it's um, here. If I if I remember correctly, if I did it right, I just did these things in a mad rush. Almost had a heart attack. It's like I didn't see anything. Oh yeah, here we go. You see that? Here's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, look at that. Look at number two there. It's hard to, you know, you can't see it. I'm, I'm not sharing my screen, am I? Or maybe I am. Okay, yeah, do that. So what I would do here is this is a plan B thing. This, these are really tough. So keep practicing the theta and the workbook and the ETH, and then also do more practice here. And hopefully between the two things, you'll get a little bit better grip. Remember, you have a voiced and a voiceless interdental consonant. It's expressed by the ETH and the theta symbols. That's the key. And I think that's it 